Hi there, I'm Matt Brzezinski, and this is Design Documents Are Great, and here's why you should consider writing one. Today we're going to quickly go over what design documents are, we'll go into them, and we're going to use AWS Core.js rewrite as a use case. Have you ever looked at a package and you didn't understand why it was designed in a certain way? Or maybe you want to handle an edge case, or you were fixing a bug, but you weren't too sure where to write it or where the root cause was? Maybe you wrote a package and then had to do a major rewrite to handle a new component, or you had to rewrite the entire thing from scratch. And in typical JuliaCon fashion, maybe you wanted more performance, but you weren't too sure where bottlenecks in your system could be. Well, a design document might be a useful tool in helping fix some of these problems. It'll give you a thousand foot overview of your package to help make sure that you're not missing anything. Defined tenets will help aid in decision making when there's a conflict of opinion. It'll keep you focused on the important aspects of your package or your project to make sure that you're hitting your milestones and not delaying anything. Readers of your design document will help find issues with your design, such as use cases which you haven't considered before you begin implementing. So what is a design document? It's just that. It's a document with your project's design, but at a high level. It'll describe the current state of your project, what the problems are, and why they need to be resolved. Or if your project hasn't been created yet, describing your current workarounds or why the project needs to be created. It'll include an overview of the major components in your system, how they interact with each other, and what workflows will exist. A list of goals will keep you on track and easily break down your project into various milestones, and measurements of success will gauge how the project went uh, post-mortem. You can also outline any open issues or problems which you don't know how to solve, so when you get your design document reviewed by others, they can provide feedback and help think of different solutions. So as you can see, there's many components that go into a design document. And I'll have a link to a template at the end of these slides, but here are four pieces that stand out to me the most. The first are tenants. These are your project's principles, which explain why certain decisions are made. Uh, your tenants will stand independently of each other, and they'll have one main idea, which is clear and memorable. For example, with AWS Core, a few of these were making using AWS and Julia easy for the user, use automation and code generation as much as possible, and creating a simple and straightforward systems design. The second component that's most important, in my opinion, is what is in and out of scope. Having a list of things that's in scope will help prevent scope creep. Throughout your implementation process, you'll most likely come up with some cool ideas and things that you want to add in, but ultimately, these are just going to delay your project. And if they weren't in your design document to begin with, they're probably not that important. Things that are out of scope are just problems that won't be looked at in this revision of a project, but these are issues that you're aware of. Your proposed solution is going to include all of your internal and external dependencies, all the components necessary to make this project work, and what sort of workflows will exist, and how this package will exist in a larger project, if that's applicable. And finally, your alternative solutions. These are just proposed solutions which you've rejected for some reason, whether that's performance or maybe the system design was too complicated. So let's take a look at how to use AWS and Julia. If you're not familiar with Amazon Web Services, they're essentially a compilation of online services for allowing you to store data or run various instances online. Currently, there's two main packages, AWS Core and AWS SDK. AWS Core does what I call low-level APIs, where as the end user, you need to know the request method that you want to perform, the request name, and any required or optional parameters that you want to pass in. AWS SDK is a much more user-friendly package with predefined functions for every request that you can make. You still need to know what your required and optional parameters are. Both of these packages can be combined together into one uh, without including a ton of modules in your namespace. And neither of these packages currently uh, implement automated code generation, so updating their APIs is a manual process, which sadly isn't documented. The system's design is pretty complicated for both of these, and many of these parts can be simplified out. And as mentioned before, it's not very user-friendly to constantly go back to the Amazon documentation to figure out how to use them. Uh, I will mention that there are a few other AWS packages, such as AWS S3.jl and AWS SQS.jl. However, these aren't available for all services. They're also handwritten, and they're not fully fleshed and tested out. 
So this is the architecture component of the AWS JL design document. In the bottom right corner, you can see an external dependency on AWS SDK JS. This is what we're basing all of our Julia functions off of. And we have a GitHub action which runs on a daily schedule. It will take the SHA hash of every service defined in that external dependency and compare it to what we have in our depth slash metadata.json file. If the service doesn't exist in metadata.json, we're gonna create new uh, definitions for that service. And if the SHA hash doesn't match, then we know Amazon has updated it. So we need to regenerate our definitions. Um, regenerating the definitions consists of two changes. The first in this example to services slash s3.jl. This is what the AWS SDK JL kind of looks like, where every request has its own function and there's going to be uh, documentation on what the request does, as well as any optional and required parameters so you don't have to go to Amazon's documentation. The second change is to AWS services.jl. This is a file with a constant for every service uh, that we define where the constant is a struct based off of the service request type that Amazon expects. And we're ultimately using these constants to make the request to Amazon. So coming back to the tenets, which I mentioned before, I think that this design hits on all three of them. It makes using AWS and Julia a lot easier for the user since all the documentation will be included in these individual service modules. It will also use as much code uh, generation and automation as possible to keep services up to date and create definitions for new ones within 24 hours of any changes to the external dependency. And the design is pretty simple. There's only six components to it. So what are some downsides to design documents? Uh, the first is it's gonna take some time to write one. I believe for the AWS document, I spent between four to six hours writing it and quite a few hours prototyping various different implementations before finding one that I was happy with. It's also difficult to find the motivation to write a document retrospectively for a package. Um, however, I think if your package or your project is widespread or new contributors are finding it difficult to make changes, it might be worthwhile to do a brain dump and create one of these documents so that users can get started on the right foot when they're contributing to your package or your project. And finally, and the most obvious one, is keeping documents up to date sucks. Um, this is probably the worst part of software development that nobody wants to do. However, I don't think it's necessary to make changes to your design document every time you're adding something or removing it. Uh, if you treat this as an artifact of your project, uh, any future revisions you make will be much more simple since it's generally laid out. It'll also give you a good reference point to what worked in the past and what didn't. Maybe there was a use case that you didn't consider at the time um, and something that was missed in that revision. So in conclusion, I think giving some thoughts to your design before implementing a solution is very important. Uh, if you do choose to create a design document and you want some feedback on it, or if you just want to chat about software development in general, Feel free to reach out to me on the Julia Slack or tag me on GitHub. My handle in both of these is at Matt Brzezinski. Uh, here's a link to the design document template as well as the AWS JL design document. And if you're interested in the subject, I'd highly recommend listening to Scott Haney's JuliaCon 2019 talk on writing maintainable code. So thanks for listening and I hope there's something that you've taken away from this quick talk. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your JuliaCon.